Nobody likes an overly pushy person, but it turns out that being underassertive is a problem too. It can disqualify you as an expert. Welcome to the series From Amateur to Expert, a daily set of videos in which I help you to improve your career and become the top name in your industry. If you haven't already, please subscribe and please hit the bell so that you get the daily notifications. There's a new video each weekday. Let's talk about the problem of not taking charge. I've been going to a certain barber for years now, and he comes from somewhere up the east coast of Africa. He can barely speak a word of English, but with grunts and sign language we get by just fine. The other day, I arrived to find that I'm getting the new guy. And the new guy hasn't been doing this for a very long time. And there are certain things about the new guy that show the fact that he is underassertive, new to this, and unsure about what he's doing. And most of it was that he was overly cautious. The old guy would grab my head in his hands, move it about, do whatever he needed, and simply get on with the job. The new guy, by contrast, bless him, was so scared of asking me to move that everything was an apology. So it was, I'm so sorry, could you put your head this way? And I'm so sorry, could you put your head that way? And the result of that, all of that apologizing, is not actually comfort for the customer. In fact, what tends to happen is if you're anything like me, you end up sitting there with your toes curling going, just get on with it. The degree to which an expert takes charge and is comfortable with what they do is the degree to which you perceive them as a take charge expert. By a similar vein, I take my little two-year-old for swimming lessons. The other day we arrive at the pool and discover we don't have the regular teacher, we have a new substitute teacher. She's new, young and inexperienced. And at first, this throws my two-year-old just a little. He's, he's a little reserved and he doesn't know who this is. So she does something initially quite clever. She sits on the step with him, puts out some of the toys, and they just play with the toys for a while, break the ice, and create a bit of a relationship. And that was absolutely fine for the first two or three minutes. What happened after that was the next half hour of what should have been a swimming lesson was her just gently letting him play with the toys. They didn't actually teach him anything and she never took charge. I was watching this, so at one point I said, gosh, you know, he's actually had a year and a half of swimming lessons. He, he can swim to an extent. And she said, oh, oh, mm, and continued playing with him on the step. Effectively, he had the same thing as a bath, not a swimming lesson. Now, fair play, she's new to this. It was her first time. She's trying to bond with the new kid. But she didn't take charge. Beyond a certain point, she should have walked him out into the water and actually started an assertive swimming lesson. Sometimes the difference between an amateur and an expert is not the knowledge, it's the degree to which you take charge. Where are the scary points for you in what you do? The social interaction, the parts that make you feel a little nervous, a little insecure. When you arrive at those points in your process, do you step up and assertively take charge? Do you stick out your hand, meet the person, show them the way forward, or do you wait for them to lead? If you are waiting for your customer to lead, you are disqualifying yourself as an expert. Experts take charge. They're not pushy, they're not arrogant, they're not aggressive. They're sure of themselves because they're good at what they do. They portray that and it matters. Being underassertive can disqualify you as an industry expert. The next time you ply your train and do what you do, make a show of taking charge and leading the way. Please do subscribe so that you get your daily tips in the From Amateur to Expert series, and please feel free to share if you feel anyone else could benefit from these ideas. Tomorrow we'll talk some more about how you can own your industry.